Hi everybody, um, my name is Jeremy, I'm from Bulat, uh, I'm based in Singapore. I'm very happy that uh, I'm being uh, invited today to give um, uh, some sharing uh, knowledge on what uh, I've been learning since I've been Bulat and during the pandemic, I'd like to share uh, more on what I've been seeing uh, in, in Asia and also in US because of our, our headquarter manufacturing uh, seat in US. Today's topic will be all on PAPR. Uh, so before we jump into PAPR, I'd just like to share some terminology um, so that you guys will not be confused uh, in between the presentations. So in during the presentations, APF, the assigned potential factors will be um, mentioned very frequently. So the assigned potential factors is actually a range of 10 to 10,000. And uh, that is uh, a rating that is given uh, by NIOSH to the respirato uh, respiratory PPEs that actually relates to the amount of contaminants that can leak into the mask. And secondly, it's fit testing. So fit testing uh, happens when uh, we are dealing with tight fitting masks and fit testing uh, is to check if the respirator sit properly onto the user face and it has to be performed annually or as needed. And most of the time or at all times, users who are using tight fitting uh, face piece or masks, uh, they have to be uh, shaved, especially for gentlemen, have to shave no beards. If not, uh, you will not ensure that they are good fitting onto your face. So what is PAPR? So PAPR is actually a short term of powered air purifying respirator, PAPR. So a PAPR is a positive pressure respirator that uses a blower to, uh, to force the ambient air through a filter and deliver it to your hood or mask. So a typical system includes a blower unit, a filter, battery, hood, and a breathing tube. And in most of the setting today, or uh, in healthcare settings, HIPAA filter is the filter that being used. And the HIPAA filter is capable and is a high efficiency filter that captures 99.99% of particulates with a mass mean of 0.3 micron in size. So the picture on the right, you can see the whole system, how it looks like. Who uses PAPR? Today, of course, we know that because of the pandemic, um, a lot of us, we, we know that the healthcare uh, personnel, the frontliners, the, the ERs, uh, they're all using the PAPR. But before pandemic, actually PAPR has been around for quite a while. We have users from pharmaceuticals, clean rooms, laboratories, um, actually now hospital, paramedics, EMT, um, even dentists, medical officers, Firefighters, ERs, uh, fabricators, and manufacturers, they are all using PAPR. Before the pandemic, PAPR in the hospital are usually on the standby mode. If the hospital is handling a lot of the contagious diseases, so usually those type of um, hospitals, they will be using PAPR more often than the regular hospital. Just to share, for example, uh, like what I'm seeing, um, we have a CDC in Singapore. So the CDC in Singapore are mainly responsible for all the uh, contagious diseases. So even before the outbreak uh, of the uh, COVID-19, uh, the hospital alone has actually uh, a fleet of 300 PAPR sets already for any outbreak. But having that kind of amount and what we are seeing today, a 300 sets isn't in, even enough for that hospital alone. So this is how how bad the situation uh, that COVID had bring us to. COVID-19, so today, everybody knows COVID-19 is, is bringing us to a new normal. And because of COVID-19, the PPEs that's being used in uh, healthcare setting has also been changed. So COVID-19 is actually part of a large family of virus, viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as the MERS and SARS that, that, that hit us previously. As such, during the COVID situations of the WHO, the CDC uh, has been constantly uh, providing us guidelines. The WHO has, has actually recommended everyone to wash their hands regularly, cover their nose and mouth when sneezing, coughing, and even now talking to, to one another. 
and avoid close contact with anyone who is coughing, sneezing, or showing any sign of respiratory illness. And to think that if everybody have to follow this, the per the, the, the person now that's, that's more uh, vulnerable or uh, are the old people, and actually also the healthcare workers and the, the, and the emergency responders are those at most risk of contracting COVID-19. And since we are a US company, our product are all from the US, we are following very closely to CDC US recommendations. So currently the uh, the CDC, sorry, so currently the CDC actually recommend a cautious approach to personnel under investigations, or in short, the PUI for COVID-19. Healthcare personnel evaluating PUI or providing care for patients with confirmed COVID-19 to use standard precautions, contact precautions, airborne precautions, and use PPE. So all these actually are very common to us already today. The standard precaution and contact precautions are actually referring to contact tracing, standard social distancing, airborne, party, uh, airborne precautions refers to the, the, the needs of wearing a mask when we go out to do our social or daily activities. And with the COVID hitting us, what does it mean to bullet? The global demand has increased largely. Um, a lot of demand has been put onto PAPR and all bullet resources have shifted our priorities. We have responded by increasing capacities up to 30 times, which you guys uh, had seen in the year earlier. We have tried to prioritizing order to the frontliners and well ensuring that our existing customers still maintain their respiratory protection uh, stocks. For example, the pharmaceuticals. So they are equally important now, when, especially when if they are in full force to produce vaccines. When the day to come. So it is critical to provide proper respiratory protection to the healthcare workers to keep them safe on the job while treating the patients. Um, the first case that actually happened in US, it happens uh, in one of the province, St. Joseph Health in Everett, where the biocontaminate, sorry, the biocontainment evaluations and specialty treatment team treated the first COVID patients. And it was from them that the PAPR played a critical role in the best team, response by maximizing respir respirator, respiratory protections with up to 1,000 APF protection factors. PAPR utilize loose fitting hood that don't require fit testing and provide full respiratory, respirator heat and face protection in one easy system, which means the PAPR does not only provide you the respiratory protections, at the same time, they provide you heat and face protection as well. And if you see the list of uh, PPEs that they have stated uh, for a standard PPE procedure, donning procedures, PAPR is one of them. And on top, on top of that, uh, CDC actually has uh, provided us a guideline of various um, strategy or optimizing of uh, using respirator. But before that, uh, hospitals and a healthcare setting, they are also have to um, think of the engineering controls like by, by placing the patient in the private room, probably a uh, negative pressure room. And also introducing administrative controls, which we also have been seeing um, regularly nowadays, today. For example, I limit the number of patients going to hospitals or uh, exclude healthcare personnel, HCP stand for healthcare personnel, not directly involved in patient care. Limit face-to-face -face healthcare personnel encounters with patients and so forth. So there is actually um, different set of administrative controls being implemented around the world and because of different country, um, different SOP, uh, they vary they various, uh, a little bit differently between countries. CDC also provides us a guideline on PPE controls. It's very important for us to understand this part as because our product falls under CPEs. Use respirator after extended life only if supplies are limited which is what we are facing at the beginning of the pandemic. Only wear the same N95 or PAPR hood for repeated close contact encounter with different patients before removing the respirator between encounters. If supplies are limited as well, it is a best practice to replace everything in between patients if possible. And be sure not to use the same N95 and PAPR hood by one healthcare personnel for multiple encounters with different patients. This is to make sure that um, when they are taking care of different 
patients with different illness, they don't spread the diseases. Next, before I start uh, sharing, I wanted to share, um, because this is a very common question that a lot of the, uh, we receive a lot of questions on this, uh, should we wear, uh, what type of respirator or respiratory uh, mask should we wear during the pandemic? So everybody, can you, can you guys just click whatever you think it is, and we will share the result right after everybody has answered the questions. Well, I guess uh, we have all the right people on, on, on today's webinar. Uh, everybody will know, should know uh, what's the differences between the different uh, masks available uh, to healthcare workers. So, but um, interestingly is that uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, this is the most common question being asked to us or to any of the uh, PPE providers. Should we wear an N95 respirator or a surgical mask? Both of which are very different. So a surgical mask or a procedural mask is a loose-fitting disposable mask that creates a physical barrier between the mouth and nose. These masks are intended to be worn by the healthcare personnel during surgery and protect the environment from the wearer. They are not designed to protect the wearer from inhaling airborne part, uh, bacteria or virus particles. But the N95 respirators, they are a tight-fitting mask that fit tight to the face and are intended to create a seal around the nose and the mouth. They are meant to help protect the wearer from inhaling infectious droplets in the environment. N95 masks require a fit test, cannot be worn by those with facial hair and are considered negative pressure respirators that can make it more difficult for wearers to breathe. When N95 respirators are not available for requirement for use, cannot be met, um, the healthcare personnel or the, or the emergency responders should have the option to protect themselves with powered air purifying respirator, the PAPRs. So actually, one does pro protect the user, one does not. That when this is uh, when this guideline has been uh, clearly written by the CDC, uh, a lot of the surgical masks, the demand would, has dropped, but the N95 and the PAPRs demand has rise uh, sharply. So as mentioned, when N95 respirators are not available or the requirements of, for use cannot be met, the healthcare workers uh, should have the option to protect themselves with PAPRs. So PAPR, or sometimes referred as a power air respirators, protect personnel from airborne contaminants. But why is it different from N95? Pretty much the, um, the principle of the N95 mask and the PAPR is almost the same, but uh, there are big differences between them. The PAPR eliminates the breathing resistance of negative pressure respirators such as N95 respirator through their blower motor. A PAPR consists of a blower that pull through and attach filters and into loose fitting hoods and cover, the, cover all the user head and face and shoulders for some of the models. So under the OSHA regulations, PAPR are specified for high hazard procedures because they can offer a side protection factors APF up to 1000 which is up to 100 times that of an N95 mask. So the N95 mask actually provides 10 APF. This improved protection is largely provided by the positive pressure in the loose fitting hood. PAPR with loose fitting hood provide additional benefits in that they do not need to be fit tested and cover the entire head and shoulder of the wearer, offering respirator, eye, and splash protection in one system. So comparing to um, healthcare workers that's wearing an N95, um, they probably have to still wear a goggle face shield uh, to, to protect them against uh, aerosol um, splashes. And it, it, usually the, the face shield itself is not good enough to protect the eye. So they actually have to wear an eye, uh, a goggle or eye protections as well. But comparing to PAPR, once you don't want the systems, and because of the positive air and the, and the coverage of the hoods, actually you have all covered, all protected. So this is actually, there is a weight advantage over here. Since I'm from Bula, so I will be sharing a little bit more on the Bula PAPR. So here is our history. We started our very first PAPR in 2001, the PA20 series. Over the years, we have been trying to improve the systems, um, getting it lighter, 
uh, getting it in, into various uh, different models where some have to be used in the uh, intrinsically safe environment. And in 2009, uh, we have actually introduced the EVA. EVA is what we are selling, offering today. And we have the EVA HL. The HL stands for hazardous locations. And we are working and looking forward for what we can come up with uh, next uh, after especially after the pandemic we know um, different concerns uh, different requests different needs and Bulat is working on it to to try to come up with something that is more uh, useful practical uh, to all the frontline workers so in our product line uh, PAPI as mentioned we have the EVA EVA HL and loose fitting hoods Loose fitting hood, we have the LF, the loose fitting series. Uh, we have the RT series, which, which you can see this for this, the RT series and the CC20 series. Um, they have the kit that can cover the shoulder. But in hospital settings, some in some country they prefer the LF series, but some they prefer the RT series or the CC20. And the between the difference between the RT and the C20 is one does come with a suspension, which means that the hood, your vision. Of the uh, visor will move with your head directions but the rt series is, is uh without the suspensions which means it's like astronaut helmets or uh, it will always stay still it's like a balloon that okay, it comes with accessories like the breathing tube filter cartridge the uh, belt we have different belts uh we have the decon accessories uh the airflow testing and the of course the battery and the charges for eva eva or uh, as at the moment, we are still having the highest airflow uh, in the industry. Uh, we have different type of loose fitting hoods uh, for um, to try to cover almost every different events, occasions, or, or even individuals' preference. The EVA itself is decontamination friendly, uh, and we went through third-party APF test uh, 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 testing, and they are all tested. So, I've generally or uh, generally. Um, describe what's EVA HL. So what is EVA HL? EVA HL is actually same as EVA, but it comes with class one division two. So it is actually forced under the um, not normally um, explosive environment. So usually the class one division one is the one that is uh, normally explosive and the class one division two is normally not explosive environment. Okay, so the, the blower itself, EVA HL comes in additional uh, model seals additional battery for circuitry, lockdown battery, ESD coating on electronics, all these four additional features is to make the blower to be able to attain the class one division two certifications. So this is the very brief technical specification of EVA. Um, we have two speed, we have the low flow at uh, 198 liter per minute or seven CFM, and we have the high speed at 240 liter per minute or 8.5 CFM. Okay. Um, and what I want to um, share more here is um, we uh, the, 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 the running time on the battery itself, uh, it varies from 4 to 16. Um, there is a big range here because of different type of foot uh, requires a different or uh, energy spend to, de to deliver uh, the same amount of uh, airflow. And the PAPRFC3, which is the HEPA filter, uh, when unopened in original packaging, it can be actually stored for 10 years. And all the loose fitting hoods or face piece is five years uh, in an unopened original packaging conditions. Our EVA blower, our PAPR, or has the active flow technology, which means that uh, taking the concept of a car consistent speed uh, functions. Uh, if you want your car to travel on a straight road for 80 km per hour uh, constantly, so you can activate the cruise control and it will start going. Um, it's very similar to this concept. Our PAPR actually has this function as well. So if you set at high airflow, it's 240 liter per minute. It will be always at 240 liter per minute. So back to the car. What if you are going up, uh, up slope? And because of the up slope, the car actually drops from 80 to 70. The car will react by wrapping up the RPM and deliver more power to the wheels and to add the 10 
more back to the speedometers so that the, the car can, can regain back to 80 km per hour. So that is what the cruise control does to the car. The very same thing to the PAPR. Once the airflow is being detected that the airflow falls below 240 liters per minute, the motor itself will also rev up the RPM so that to maintain 240 liters per minute to the user. So with such kind of uh, technology that we have in our PAPR, um, when sometimes there is a twisted tube, there is a um, incorrect uh, connection of the uh, tube to hood connections, there is a block filter, the user is still safe because the, the PAPR will always detect that the, the, the airflow outputs to the user is always 240. But because of that, because of the high RPM, the battery lifespan drops. This explains why just now the battery lifespan will vary from 4 to 16 hours. But on average, a uh, normal um, correct situations, each battery should last six to eight hours. So next, this is the uh, our battery fuel gauge. Um, we have the fuel gauge uh, that is built into the battery itself. Uh, we do have the low flow alarm. When that happens, a user can actually easily check the status of the battery by pressing the buttons. And you can see on the um, GIF on the right, and we have our battery gauge designed and built on the outside of the, of the battery, which means after you install the battery, you still can uh, view the gauge itself. Because we know that uh, some models um, out there, uh, they have this gauge, but it will be hidden once you install into the blower itself. So usually uh, each blower come with, come with a individual dogging stations and one battery itself. Uh, but Due to large setting in different hospitals, some hospitals they have a fleet of um of uh, PAPR. So we do have a gang charger as an optional accessories uh, for them to choose if they want to just uh, get a gang charger rather than um, fixing up six individual docking stocking stations. Next, um, just like to share a little bit more on individual series of uh, the loose fitting. So the loose fitting hood uh. They provide high levels of protections. Uh, we do have loose fitting foot that are actually only rated at 25 APF. Uh, they are only a, a, a handful of uh, the models that are actually attain only 25 because once the hood design does not cover much of your area, uh, it cannot attain that 1000 APF. So some, some models, yeah, they do provide lower APF, but even at 25 APF, they are 2.5 times higher than N95. And it does not require, it, it's not taxing on the user lung to actually breathe because all air, all the clean air is being delivered to the user. And it accommodates, it accommodates uh, user facial hair and eyewear. Especially in um, today's pandemics, uh, all the healthcare workers, they are working tirelessly, continuously, days and nights to, to protect, uh, to take care of the patients. And a lot of them may not have the luxury of time to take care of their personal hygiene, or uh, not the hygiene, the, the personal facial hair, um, they, they have to just to um, on a activation mode. They have to get back to work. So um, such loose fitting hood really help them a lot, uh, allowing them have an ease of mind not to keep on worrying that uh, their facial hair will, may may actually cause them a uh, risk of um, having the contaminants into their mask if they are wearing a tight fitting mask. So 20LF, 20LF is uh, our loose fitting hood that actually covers only up to the neck areas. Um, countries like in US uh, and in Singapore, healthcare workers, they are more lean towards this type of hood. There's no right or wrong on which hood design to use, but yes, they are more lean towards this type of hood, being that they have been used, they are used to use this type of hood. And uh, I think in Singapore settings, uh, they are very, in the earlier days, they are they are very close to US uh, medicals and they think likewise. That's why this 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 preference this is this just a so 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 preference on what kind of uh, hood they are using. And you can see we are actually using Tupon Titan 2000 series to build uh, our hood. We are all using Tupon materials. Uh, so we're happy that today, um, other than us, uh, the next session will be Tupon. I understand that uh, we have Tupon participants here today. Uh, and we we really uh love their, their materials uh, and trust you know, on their materials to, to build our, our PPs since many years back until today. The CC20, um, 
large lens, um, no lens fogging due to because of the positive airflow, uh, very fast donning. Um, we have a suspension inbuilt inside. So this, this hood actually provide up to 1000 APF. They actually cover up to your shoulders. The RT series that I, I always call it call it the astronaut uh, helmets because it's so so huge and large. Uh, but of course, uh, also if your preference is to have a very large panoramic lens and you do not want something that is uh, tying onto your head, sitting onto your scalp, um, then yes, this is the one to go. Uh, it provides also 1,000 uh, APF, 100 times more than N95. I mentioned enough, but never enough that uh, it, it actually provides you more than one protections, not only the respiratory, they also provide you the eye and face splash protections as well. And these models, they have 2000, uh, the DuPont Titan 2000 and 4000 series. So 4000 is a, a, a higher level, uh, a better material from DuPont. So what you see now is spectrum. This is our tight fitting mask. Uh, the reason why I'm showing is that actually PAPR does also uh, comes with tight fitting mask. As I mentioned uh, very early in my presentations that um, before the pandemic, PAPR are already widely used by a lot of different industries. So the more commercial industry are actually using the spectrum, the tight fitting mask. Reason being, they are in of um, their application do not really uh, allow them to wear loose fitting masks because of the uh, confined space, or sometimes most of the time the the, the painters, the spray painting, um, the full face mask with the tail lens will be a better uh, better fit than the loose fitting. That's why we, we do have this solution, but in healthcare settings, because of the ease of not having the user to go through the fit testing, the fact that type fitting mask is not really, we, we do not really uh, recommend this in all the healthcare setting. Tight fitting mask also means that um, usually the in, in between each healthcare personnel, they do not share each other mask, which means they have to equip every one of them with one mask. Whereas the loose fitting mask with proper disinfections uh, following the individual hospital SOP in each countries, uh, they can be shared. We have the decontamination options. So today's the thing we uh, always recommend people to wipe down with a uh, dry or damp cloth using warm water or mouth detergents. Of course, during the pandemic or uh, settings, um, COVID-19, uh, we always uh, recommend people to use a uh, cleaning agent with at least 70% uh, alcohol content, IPA, and it will be good enough to dis disinfect the, uh, P uh, the respir respir uh, respirator PPEs. So furthermore, we do also have uh, a lot of um, other components like the backpacks. Uh, we do have this kind of setting because um, not really in the healthcare, uh, but in some of the industry, uh, they, they do not like the waist mount type of uh, PAPM. So we do have the uh, backpack style. So they can do actually more vigorous uh, work without uh, having um, the PAPR, the, the waist mounted PAPR hidden their way. Or blocking um, their ease of uh, moving stuff. And we have given that the breathing tube to accommodate different uh, different hoods. And we have three types of uh, filters actually. So uh, the, the FC3, as I mentioned, is the HIPAA filter, FC4 and FC5 are all the chemical combinations filters. So actually, how does the HIPAA filters uh, work? The FC3, the FC3 are actually a backending type of filter that collect particles through several different mechanisms, including impactions, interceptions, gravity, and diffusions. So as you can see, the, all, all, all the particles actually get, get kind of trapped by the filters when the blow is trying to draw in air uh, for the user. And this is the next question that I always received during uh, my training sessions to the user is, can the particles fall out of a HIPAA filter? So as from the recommendations and the guideline, the latest guideline from CDC is that all the uh, filters, all the uh, filters are tested against the particle size of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 micrometers. And the minimum acceptable efficiency of the filter must hit at least 99.97%. So particles collected on the filter are trapped in the filter matrix and are not easily released from the upstream, which means the outside of the filter. Particles are typically only released if filter is violently agitated, such as being banged on a hard surface. No particles will be able to penetrate to the downstream side after capture, which means the inner side of the filters. 
So this is what was being um, shared, uh, being stated on the guideline of CDC. That's why there will be no concern about the releasing of particles, even when you are changing out the filters. And then the very next question that followed by this is how often should the filter be changed? Then again, I will, I will share again is that um, we really have different practices around the world. But as per CDC recommendation is that HIPAA filter should be replaced when the airflow becomes restricted. So for instance, like for uh, the EVA, um, for Bula EVA, PAPR, how do we know that the airflow is being restricted? So we do have an airflow, low airflow alarm. When the airflow, there's a sensor inside our, our blower. So if the airflow falls below 6 CFM, so 6 CFM is being dictated by the NIOFs uh, as the minimum airflow to provide enough protections to the user against contaminants. So if it falls below, then the alarm will go. So how does the flow, uh, the flow alarm sounds like? It's just a continuous beep uh, that will be sent through from the blower to the hose and into the hood itself, which only meant for the user to hear it. This is because when doing or uh, uh, in a like uh, operating theater uh, setting, there will be a multiple user using PAPR. So this this kind of design is to ensure that um, the user knows the alarm is is not from for for themselves. It's actually for someone else. So actually the the alarm is directed to the user more directly instead of just uh, around the, in the in the environment. So when this happens, it actually means a low flow is being delivered to the user. There can be multiple reasons. There can be because of a twisted or a tube. They, 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 be, they may be um, a broken tube uh, or a broken hood. And but with all that, with all reason, even not only the filter that there's that's possible that's being being blocked. Um, all of the above reason is enough for the user to stop what, what they are doing and go to a safe zone and do a check on the system itself. So this is the one way that we, we, we uh, train the user to check if the filter is due to be changed. But of course, I come across some of the hospital with, uh, with different type of uh, requirements. When we have, only when we have uh, sufficient stocks uh, of filters, some hospital actually uh, follows a daily change up. So they do not want to bring forward the filter for the next shift or for the next day usage. So that will happen when there is sufficient uh, filter and hoods for them to do a change up. That is the best scenario that we can have as a best, best practice. But you know, you guys know shortage of um, stocks is ha uh, has happened. Uh, when during the peak period uh, of the pandemic. So, so it, it really depends on how the uh, hospital set their SOP and we will provide recommendations accordingly. And how do we clean the loose fitting hoods? So I mentioned uh, most of the hospital that I, I provide trainings, uh, most of them, they reuse the loose fitting hoods. Uh, and, but before the next person use, there must be a, a, a proper clean out of the loose fitting hood, the tube and the belt, the whole set accept the filters if they, are, if they are not changing out. So it's always an inside out kind of approach and what kind of uh, agent they are going to use. Um, as uh, earlier mentioned, we also follow strictly to the CDC recommendations uh, with agents that's at least, uh, with content at least of 70% alcohol, it is acceptable. So during um, the pandemic, uh, Bula ourselves in USHQ, uh, we have tried to, um, buy some of the cleaners or the agents uh, into the in our in-house lab and do uh, the cleaning to make sure that the uh, the common, the very common agents that we use uh, do not disintegrate uh, our materials. So the, the list of uh, chemical agents on the right are those that actually we have uh, on our own account uh, tested it and we have um, tested it and uh, making sure that it does not actually deteriorate our uh, PPEs prematurely. But plus, please take note is that uh, we have done this on just on Bula So account. We have not done it together with DuPont or with any agency in US. This is just to provide uh, additional uh, guidelines to user. Okay, 
this page is really a, a, a side to side uh, comparison. So why PAPR? From first, you can see um, the assigned protection factors is a 10 APF versus a up to 1000 APF. Particulate filtration, uh, that is a slight uh, better for performance from HIPAA filters, but that, that, that slight performance means they can block really out almost all the uh, particulates with the size as small as 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 microns. And it is it's a positive uh, pressure versus a negative pressure. The unrestricted of breathing, not taxing to your lungs or uh, during physical activities really means a lot here. Uh, it may not mean a lot to young people, the young frontliners, but you know, we have a huge range of uh, healthcare workers in the hospital. We have the fresh grad, we have people who have been in the service for 20, 30 years, and they are still now in the white gown protecting us. So sometimes uh, it does really matters and it does affect individual ability to focus on what they are doing. Uh, the PAPR, the PAPR hood is equally lightweight and comfortable as the N95 mask. But the N95 mask has a tight fitting features, which means it will stick to your face for hours per day. You guys may have seen a lot of pictures circulating in social media, showing frontline workers, the nurses, the doctors have the abrasion on their face. That is the result of, of wearing a tight fitting mask for very long hours. And that, for, and for that, the PAPR really give them a more comfort uh, setting when where they do not have get, they will not get such uh, abrasions. And because of N95, they need to wear goggles to protect their eye. And the goggles itself also are also creating abrasion for long hours of our wearing. And because of that, um, the PAPR also can provide a much more comfort setting because it's just one hood that provide all the protections needed. Fit testing is not required. I mentioned this, uh, I, think, I think many, many times uh, throughout my webinars. The loose fitting mask, the one thing uh, I'd like to share here is that um, during the pandemic, uh, I visited uh, quite a few hospitals, I uh, speak to uh, quite a few doctors and surgeons, uh, nurses, managers. One thing that interestingly they have shared with me is that um, they have told me even with PAPR in place, they are still wearing a N95 mask underneath the hoods. I asked them why. Because I said PAPR actually have uh, provide you enough protections and much more, hundred times more than your N95 mask. So they have mentioned that they are because that is the uh, when I spoke to them is kind of a beginning of the pandemic. So at the beginning of the pandemic, um, it's a human nature that um there will be people are scared, people are afraid. Of course, although their their job is to save life, but yes, they are they still want to protect themselves. Uh, as much as possible. So they still will want to have one more layer of protections on top of PAPR because of Murphy Law. So nobody can guarantee that when your blower will stop blowing, when your battery stop working. So most of them, and most of them are doing that in surgeon, in, in operating theatre, is that when they are doing op operations for uh, any um, COVID, Confirm patients or even with a uh, patient with uh, contagious diseases, uh, they will want to wear an N95 underneath the PAPR hood. So to if the blower really fail on them, they are still protected. So this is the kind of thing I, I heard there. And because of that, uh, some of the hospital do not go for a tight fitting PAPR. So there is a PAPR out there that actually offer the tight fitting type of um, like our spectrum, they does offer that and they will not want to take that option. It one for do the one simple reason is that they cannot wear N95 mask under the tight fitting mask. So very interestingly, I, I, I learned that. I know that that is uh, due to personal preference or individual uh, hospital uh, um, needs. But that, that is something that, that uh, I learned during the, the pandemic. Here are some pictures that I would like to share. <clears throat> Uh, this, uh, these pictures are not taken in Singapore. Uh, I have actually my colleague, uh, um, my Malaysian colleague that is actually doing the training in hospital in, in, in Malaysia. So he's together with me today as well. Uh, 
during the high peak uh, seasons, uh, during the MCOs, uh, he has been getting, uh, we have to apply for, for approval to, to move to a uh, hospital to, to conduct training so that to provide the frontliners um, the, the training needed for them to start using the PAPR as soon as possible. And, and we are really trying to protect the frontliners who, who are actually healing the patients. With that, uh, this is actually my last slide. I'm, uh, I'm glad that, uh, that yeah, I'm, I'm, today I'm able to share something that you guys, uh, some of you guys already know, some of you guys are first time hearing it. Um, it's always good to learn something new each day. To conclude my webinar today, this is my last uh, slide, as I mentioned. Um, really thank, a very big thank you to all the frontliners, um, especially for those who are attending my webinar today. Uh, you guys are really important. Uh, you guys are really tired. Uh, we really want to thank you, taking this opportunity to thank you guys uh, for putting yourself in a, such a risk, uh, but yet still try to protect uh, every each one of us. So thank you very much. Uh,